Hi, my name is Jason Sullivan, and I wanted to post a video that further explains some recent tutorial videos I have put on my channel. I have many friends and colleagues that have expressed interest in a little bit further richer detail in what I do to develop my technique, my sound, my style of playing, and not only for myself, but for my students. I recommend it for anyone who's playing a wind instrument in particular. Most of my work is grounded in recent research in what we call 21st century fields, fields like cognitive neuroscience, fields like complex adaptive systems, fields like heuristics, human error. I've learned a lot of information in those fields that I feel highly relate to how we as people develop skill in performance of anything, and I just apply that to how I play a brass instrument. A couple of the concepts that I felt were lacking in what most people are using in traditional methods to warm up or develop their technique and style of play is that they're not grounded in the context of Western tonal harmony. I think that's a really huge factor for what we do. If we want to play music that's grounded in Western tonal harmony, the warm-ups, the scales, the arpeggiations, anything that we're doing to develop our style of play should be based in that context rather than the mechanical constraints of this open overtone series. Also, some of the warm-ups and such that people do, they don't really allow for a flexible level of difficulty. So often if you do it with a full band or if you do it in a teacher and student situation, you might have a situation where somebody's either under-challenged or somebody's overwhelmed. I wanted to create something where there's a flexible level of difficulty and multiple levels of achievement. Uh, people can all get together at the same time and play and have an optimal level of challenge so that it fosters an optimal level of growth. Thirdly, I wanted to make warm-ups and a practice technique system, if you will, that allows for constant variations. I like to do the same concepts over and over. I like to practice the same types of things over and over, but I want to add little variations every time I do it to keep it fresh. I want to add a robustness to my ability to adapt it to music, and music kind of goes all over the place, so should our technique. So I created something called 151 warm-ups, 161 warm-ups, 141 warm-ups. And these are basically harmonic patterns. They just go through simple chord progressions. But from there, you can use them as a basic warm-up, uh, like long tones. Uh, it would act like Remington, except that it is grounded in a context of Western tonal music. You could play scales, and you can play arpeggios. And instead of just playing them statically, meaning just playing things that fall one Chord, they actually meander their way through simple chord progressions, much like Western tonal music. And I think that's the beginning step towards coming up with more complex things to do. So I wanted to demonstrate how to use those. If you go to www.jasonsolomon.com, or if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll find a couple of videos right now that are posted that are called 161, 141, 151. And what I did was I posted pictures on those videos of the actual parts to this chorale that I wrote. I also recorded the bass line. So theoretically, I could play one of the other parts along. So I'm going to demonstrate that now. So I've got this amplifier. If you have a set of speakers or a set of headphones, this can work really well. You just play the video. Here's a 151 warm up. And what I'm going to do is part six is playing on the video. So I'm going to play part five along with it. There'll be eight clicks to start. So by using that, I'm able to tune the notes that I'm playing using pure harmonic intonation, as if I'm playing in an ensemble where the roots are present. So I'm learning about things like voice leading, I'm also learning about things like phrasing, and I'm doing it in the context of Western tonal harmony, basically the framework that Western music is written on. What I can also do is I can incorporate things like scale patterns. So I'm going to take the same video, and I'm going to go back to the beginning, and now I'm going to play a simple scale pattern over this. And instead of doing the standard...
which seems to permeate our school systems and our private lessons, yet it sticks only under one chord. It does not do what music does. Music ebbs and flows through a chord progression. So then when students go to apply their knowledge of scales, they can't seem to read things that are in B flat. They can play their B flat scale, but they can't read things in B flat. So with this method, what I've done is I've created a bunch of scale patterns and arpeggios that I can play along with simple chord progressions. So So you get the idea. There's a large variety of things that you can play along with this chord progression. Here's a similar example where I use the 1-4-1 video that's posted on my website. Again, I'm going to play some simple scale patterns that fit over the 1-4-1 pattern. I'll start with eight clicks. With my students, usually I'll have them play part one, two, three, four, or five while I provide the bass line. But to add a level of challenge for myself that I think is uh, appropriate even in a lesson setting, is I'll start adding some octave leaps. As a bass trombonist in particular, octave leaps are a part of my job. So I'm going to add those to the bass line now. Here's a one, five, one. Want to work on your soft playing? Turn the volume down.
Thanks for watching my video. I encourage you to try this method with yourself, your students, or your ensembles. If you go to www.jasonsellum.com and look for innovative practice tools, you'll find your way to a page entitled Harmonic Fluency, and from there, all you need is an Adobe Reader, and you can download the 151, 141, and 161 warm-ups for any transposition commonly found in bands and orchestras today. Thanks for watching, and enjoy the practicing.